Hey everyone, hope you're doing great. I was just browsing yesterday and saw tons of people having problems with the 1% lows, especially in Counter-Strike 2, so I decided to make a quick video to help you fix it. And of course, I'll teach you how to go from this to this in less than 5 minutes. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by SwiftDo PDF. It's a simple, easy to use PDF editor that works on Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. You can edit, merge, sign, or convert your PDFs anytime, and it's super handy when you need it. Grab a free trial with the link in my description and try it out for yourself today. Now, let's get back to it. First thing I want to mention is that we'll be testing this in CS2, but it might help if you're experiencing bad frame times and 1% lows in other games too. There are three things we'll need before we start the CS2 benchmark map, then CapFrameX, which we'll use to measure the metrics like FPS and frame times, and finally, an NVIDIA graphics card so we can access the control panel settings. To download the benchmark map, visit the link in the description and click subscribe, then it'll automatically be added to your workshop maps in game. You can then download CapFrameX from their official website, and we're good to go. All we have to do now is launch it and adjust the settings slightly. Set your capture key to anything you like and set the capture length to 30 seconds. Then finally, set your capture delay to 5 seconds. Once you're done with this, launch CS2 and head over to your workshop maps. Then select the one we just downloaded and click go. The next thing you'll have to do, as soon as the map fully loads in, is press the capture key we just set in CapFrameX to start benchmarking. You can also repeat this process about 5 times and aggregate the benchmarks for more accurate results. However, we'll leave this for another more in-depth video, which I'll work on in the future. Once you're done with all of this, open CapFrameX and confirm that your 1% FPS is definitely low, which will most likely be the case for 90% of you watching this video. The solution is pretty simple. Open the CS2 properties on Steam and add the following launch options. Next up, open the NVIDIA control panel, select Manage 3D Settings, and scroll down until you see Max Frame Rate. Turn it on, and set it to about 10% less than your average FPS, then go and retest in-game. You might have to repeat this a few times until you reach the sweet spot for your system, but I'd recommend going little by little with small decrements so you get the most out of it. But before we get to the FPS and input delay benchmarks, I'd like to invite you to join our Discord community. We offer PC optimization help, a custom operating system meant for gaming, tons of power plans, and plenty of other things you might find useful. And of course, I'd personally love to have you there. Thank you. The 1% lows improvements we had were up to 42% when compared to uncapped, and a massive 122% when compared to an in-game cap. So if you're still running uncapped or using an in-game cap and wonder why your game feels like an absolute poop, this might just be it. We'll also have a look at the frame times, and you can clearly see the frame time variance was reduced by a lot, which in turn will make your game feel smooth and your mouse movement much more consistent. I also know some of you will come up with the usual FPS isn't everything argument, so I tested the input delay with our latency analyzer, and here's the results. As you can see, they were all pretty similar, with a difference of only 0.2 milliseconds between uncapped and our method. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't the latency increase? Well, it's super simple. In short, having bad frame pacing will generally cause higher and inconsistent input latency even if your FPS is higher. Capping it on the other hand, typically reduces frame time fluctuations and offsets the naturally higher latency that comes with lower FPS, and therefore results in a smoother input, no stuttering, and a very similar average input delay compared to uncapped. And without wasting your time, I'll just leave a teeny tiny wall of text for you explaining why this method works. Please pause the video and read it if you'd like. And to wrap this all up, have in mind this might not work for everybody, but it's 100% worth a try considering the gigantic benefits it brings. But anyway guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, love you all, and I'll see you in the next one.